So let's go into some depth about squamous cell carcinoma treatment options. So you, if you have a diagnosis of squamous cell, what do you do now? Well, squamous cell treatment, there are, there are several different ways to manage this type of skin cancer, and we'll try and touch upon uh, several of them. So we have electrodesiccation and curatage, excision, cutting it out, using radiation to treat the site, uh, a special surgical technique called Mohs micrographic surgery, or for very thin early skin cancers, we do have some topical medications. Let's start with electrodesiccation and curatage, or what we commonly call E, D, and C. So a curette is a sharp uh, scalpel-like instrument that we use to scrape away tumor cells. And this is followed by destroying further tissue with an electric pen type of device uh, called a hyfricator. And this desiccates or destroys uh, more of the uh, uh, tumor cells in the region. And that's usually done for several cycles, uh, all in one visit to the same site. This is a simple, cost-effective way to treat very uh, uh, many types of non-melanoma type skin cancer. So basal cell and squamous cell are often managed this way. Uh, it's a great treatment for uh, superficial uh, uh, tumors that might be spreading along the surface but aren't invading deeply into the skin. And the cure rate uh, is 90% or more depending on the skill of the uh, dermatologist. If it invades fat, however, if the tumor invades fat, excision is required. This procedure takes just a few minutes in a clinical type setting. Squamous cell excision. Well, uh, this can also be done in the clinic. Uh, the site is numbed and then the entire uh, cancer with an appropriate margin of normal skin around the site as well as deep to the site is taken. Uh, this is usually done in an elliptical uh, fashion, which means kind of a football uh, shape uh, excision is taken. That way the skin can be sewn back together in a more linear fashion. It can be sewn back together in a line. Again, this also uh, has a cure rate of 90 uh, to 95 percent or more. And this is for both low risk and some high risk tumors will be, uh, and most high risk tumors will be managed with excision. Well, radiation. If a patient is greater than about 55 or 65 years of age, depends on the study you read, uh, this can be indicated. Well, we consider radiation when surgery is not a good option for the patient. So it's a very large tumor, uh, or for some reason the patient cannot have surgery performed on the site. If there is perineural invasion, so if the cancer is invading deeply and getting into the nerve tissue, it's been shown that radiation is very beneficial uh, to help prevent the spread of this tumor. If there are positive lymph nodes, lymph nodes uh, are part of our immune system, and people have often had swollen lymph nodes when they've had a, a sore throat, the, the glands in your neck will swell. Well, those are lymph nodes. If you have cancer that has spread to those, radiation is recommended. Uh, or again, if you have an unresectable tumor, radiation is recommended. There are a few cases when you don't use radiation, and these are fairly rare. One is a subtype of cancer called verrucous carcinoma. Uh, and the other is for a rare condition called basal cell nevus syndrome. Those are rare, so we just mentioned them for completeness sake. Mohs micrographic surgery is a special technique where there is intraoperative margin control. Well, what that means is that after the cancer is taken out in the clinic, the tissue is, is frozen. In fact, it's called a frozen section. And this is looked at right then and there while the patient is numb and margins can be checked in the clinical setting. If there's still uh, a remnant of cancer left behind, uh, then while the patient is still numb in the clinic, another layer of tissue is taken out, and again, that is frozen, and a histologic section, uh, a stained slide is made, and uh, again, that just is continued until all the cancer is removed. This is a great technique for large tumors or tumors with poorly defined borders, uh, certain cosmetic, cosmetically sensitive areas uh, or areas of uh, potential high recurrence rate are, are when we'd pick Mohs micrographic surgery, and again, recurrent skin cancers. Uh, 
tissue preservation, uh, such as areas around the eye or the mouth or the nose or the fingers or the genitals, uh, in these cases, we'd also consider Mohs micrographic surgery. And again, aggressive histologic uh, features, a poorly differentiated tumor uh, or deep invasion or perineural invasion, uh, we would usually use this technique. For very superficial cancers, we can use uh, two main medications. One is called imiquimod, which is an immune uh, uh, stimulating medication. It helps stimulate your own white blood cells that come into the region to, the, to destroy uh, the malignancy. Again, this is only effective for superficial basal cell or in situ uh, squamous cell. There are a few other exceptions where we'd use imiquimod or another topical medication called 5-fluorouracil, which is a topical chemotherapy. So in the 5-FU or 5-fluorouracil uh, uh, instance, we use this chemotherapy topically to destroy the tumor cells. These are usually used over the course of about four to six weeks, and they make a red raw patch at the site. And again, this gives us very uh, high cure rates, approaching 90%. And uh, this is also a nice option for larger tumors in cosmetically, cosmetically sensitive areas. So if you have a, a fairly wide yet superficial uh, squamous cell, what we call an in situ tumor on the forehead, we might consider uh, a topical chemotherapy or a topical immune modifier. So we want to, again, prevent our sun cup from filling because the more sun damage we get, the more likely it is we'll develop a uh, skin cancer. And the more fair your skin, the more likely you will reach your personal threshold for skin cancer as shown here on the graph. Is your skin fair as in the white arrow? Well, then you're going to surpass that threshold. If your skin is darker, then you have uh, a little more built-in protection.